Hello everyone and welcome to WASP 101. I'm Andrea Rossi, the developer of WASP. In this tutorial we are going to continue exploring the topic of uh, constraints in WASP and we are going to specifically look at plane constraints which means uh, constraints that allow us to place rhino planes in space and use these planes to limit the aggregation to not and force the aggregation to never pass those planes. We are going to understand a little bit how this kind of constraint works as well as the different modes that uh, it allows us to change in order to control our aggregation better. Uh, let's get started. If you go on and download the files that you can find in the description box, you will find in the Rhino file a simple element which is just a stick with two inclined connections on its sides and two connections at its ending. So we're going to be using this simple part as an example for testing what we can do with uh, plane constraints to limit uh, the growth of an aggregation. So what we're going to do, as you now should know very easily to do, is we're going to start building our part. And so we're going to create a geometry component. Right click, set one geometry, and import the part. And then we're going to also select the part in Rhino and hit our gray light bulb to hide it. And then we're going to import our uh, connection points and lines. So we're going to create a point component. And we're going to select them from bottom to top in order. So we're going to right click, set multiple points, and select one, two, three, and four. And then hit enter. And then we're going to create some a curve component and select the curves in the same order. So set multiple curves, one, two, three, and four. Great. Now that we have our basic elements, we can go to our WASP tab. And we can uh, go and get, first of all, a connection from direction to create our connections. And so we're going to connect geometries, centers, and up directions. And that's going to create our connection planes and our connections directly. And then we're going to create a basic part, which for simplicity we are going to just call P now. And then we're going to connect our geometry and our connections. Now, something that it's important to notice here is that in the case of plane constraints, uh, a plane constraint is a constraint that we define a global constraint. So it's a constraint that is not applied on the single part, but it's applied at the global level of the whole aggregation. What that means is that we don't need to use the WASP advanced part uh, as we used for the support constraint, but we can use a simple part because we are going to then place the constraints directly on the aggregation. Okay, now that we created our part, we can uh, create a quick aggregation. So I'm going to again use a stochastic aggregation for simplicity, but everything that I'm showing will be also working for a field driven aggregation. And we're going to bring it in. We're going to connect our parts to part. We're going to set our number of parts to 120 for now. And then I need to specify my rules. And in this case, I don't want to be thinking about the rule generator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be typing my rules. So I'm going to create a rule from text, create a panel, right click on the panel and uncheck multi-line data so that every line will be a, a separate data entry. And then we're going to go on and specify the rules. And we want to connect the endings with each other and the sides with each other. So we're going to say P zero connects to P three and also the other way around P three connects to P zero and then P one sorry connects to P two and P two P two connects to P Okay, we're going to connect this and generate our four rules and then connect them to rules. And lastly, we're going to create our reset button. Now we're going to create a get part geometry just to check that everything is working fine. And if we connect it, we see that effectively this is starting to create a, an aggregation. We can maybe create a custom preview. And as watch, just to see this in a nicer color and in a nicer shading. And we're going to hide our geometry. Okay. So now we see that if we 
grow our aggregation, this is gonna grow in space. And if we reset, this is gonna change shape, but it's not gonna have any specific limitation. It's just gonna grow everywhere in space according to what the connections allow. So what we wanna do is now we wanna define a specific plane in space that will allow us to crop this aggregation and say that the aggregation is not allowed to grow beyond this plane. To do that, we are gonna go and start, first of all, to create a plane. And to create a plane, we are gonna first create a point using construct point. And what we wanna specify is we are ju just gonna want to control the X of it. And I'm gonna create a slider which has a negative values as well. So to create that, I'm gonna type minus 100, then type two dots, type zero, which is the value I want for the slider, and then two dots again, and 100, which is gonna be the maximum. And so now I have this slider which I can use to control the position of my plane. We're gonna then create a vertical plane cutting through our aggregation. So we're gonna create a YZ plane, which we're gonna set its origin for. And now you see that we created this plane here, which we can move in space to control this. Now that we have a plane, we can very quickly create a plane constraint. If you go under aggregation and get a plane constraint, we can get the component that we want to talk about today. And so what you see in a plane constraint is that it has three inputs. It's relatively simple. So the first input is the plane that we want to use as a constraint. And that's going to be our YZ plane. The second input and the third input are two Boolean inputs. And the first one is asking us if we want to allow growth on the positive or on the negative X uh, side of our plane. And we're going to create a toggle again. And we're gonna set it to true, meaning that we want to allow growth on the positive side. So if you look at this from this side, we're gonna allow growth on this side and not allow growth on this side. And secondly, we are gonna double click and we can choose if the constraint is soft or hard. What this means is that a soft constraint is a constraint that will uh, check only the center point of each part whether they are violating the condition. So whether the center point is beyond the, the limit set by the plane or not. When it's set, if we set something as a hard constraint, the whole mesh will be tested against the plane and so the whole mesh of the part will never be allowed to go beyond that. Now what we can do is once we created our plane constraint, we can take it and connect it in GC, which is the input for setting global constraints. And if now I go on and I reset, nothing happens. You see that the constraint is not active. Now, if you remember when we built the tutorial last week, uh, not last week, it was a bit longer, but last time, um, we had to set a specific mode for the aggregation in order to allow local constraints, such as the supports, to be uh, computed. Now that's the same for global constraints, and in this case we are using plane constraints. And so we have to change the mode from zero, which is the default, to two, which is the mode that will consider global constraints. So we can go on and zoom in here and create a slider, set to two, and connect it to mode. And if now we reset, you see that effectively, I can maybe look at it from a front, my aggregation is being cut wherever this plane is. If I go on and move my plane a bit further and then reset, you see that my aggregation is there. You see that some parts are still getting through and the reason why they're getting through is because we are working with, us, as I said before, a soft constraint. So if we go on and double click and change the constraint from soft to hard and reset again, now you see that none of the parts is actually allowed to grow beyond that. Now, if we go on and bring this plane back to zero, if we reset, you see that nothing is, everything will just grow in a flat plane because the things are not allowed to twist because they will always violate the plane. But if I set this back to soft, we have an aggregation that is limited at that point. If now we go on and change the positive to false, meaning that we are allowing growth just on the negative side and we then reset, you see that we are just flipping the whole constraint and so allowing growth just on the opposite side. Now, of course, you don't have to use necessarily only um, vertical or horizontal planes, so you don't just need to work within or orthogonal directions. But something that we can also very easily do is we can move our plane a little bit forward here. And we can transform this plane in, in order to give it an inclination in the space. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a rotate 3D component. And our rotate 3D takes a geometry to rotate, which is our plane, an angle. And in this case, I wanna rotate my plane of, for example, 45 degrees. And I'm gonna also right click on angle and say that I wanna use degrees. And then to specify the um, center and axis of orientation, we wanna use always work within this plane. So we are gonna de construct a plane itself and we're gonna say that we want to rotate around its center around its origin and around its x-axis which is the global y-axis now if you see we created a 45 degrees inclined plane here and if now I go on and connect that and reset my aggregation you see that now I have a plane cutting in space the uh, the aggregation so you can see it from a side we could of course rotate this plane more and another thing that we can of course do is we can take this whole block which defines a constraint we can copy paste it with ctrl c and ctrl v lower and then we can go on and double click on our angle slider set the minimum not anymore to zero but to minus 100 and set its value to minus 45. So now we're creating a second plane, which you can see here, which is oriented, which is kind of mirrored compared to the first one. If we now keep shift pressed and plug the second plane as well in our global constraint, and then we go on and reset, you see what's happening. We're using both planes and we're creating an aggregation which is constrained within these two planes. Now what you understand is that this is a pretty simple way to create uh, constraining geometries that limit the growth of an aggregation in a relatively uh, direct way. So for example, we can just use planes, but another thing that we could do is we can also extract planes directly from specific geometries and use these planes to constrain a, an aggregation to be within a geometry. Of course, the only limitation we have is, as we are working with planes, which are infinite in space, is that the geometry we create has to be convex. So if you're going to be trying to do that with a concave geometry, that's just not going to be working. As an example, you can hide Grasshopper for a moment and switch the part layer off in the layer tab. And you will see that we have a bunch of points in space. And if you go on and select them all, and bring them into Grasshopper. We're using a point component. So we're gonna right click, set multiple points. And now we have all our points. We can use these points to create what is called a Voronoi cell, which is the, the volume enclosing another point in the center of this, which has all the planes which are equidistant from the, each of those points. So if we go on and create a construct point, which we leave by default in the center of the origin. And if now go on and we get a Voronoi cell, oops, sorry. Where we say that our center point is this one and our neighbors are there. You see that we are going to create this crystal like shape. Once we created this shape, we can actually go on and explode it using the construct BRAP. Take all the faces and get the centroid using add area component. And then use the centroid to evaluate the plane that sits on each of the surfaces. So to do that, we are gonna use a BREP closest point, where we're gonna say that's our BREP and those are our points. And this returns, of course, the closest point, which is the point itself, since this surface is a planar, but it also returns us the normal. And so what we can do is we can do, we can create a plane normal from this and our normal. And now we're creating planes that are limiting this shape in space. If now we go on again in our aggregation tab and get a plane constraint, we're gonna connect all our planes as this is a closed shape, so the normals will always be pointing outwards, we want to grow on the negative side, so we're going to create a toggle, set to false for positive, 
and we're gonna use the soft to uh, default, which is true. So we're gonna use a soft constraint. If now I take this and without keeping shift pressed, so that I will disconnect the other ones, connect this one there, and go on and reset, you see that now created an aggregation that gets fully constrained within this volume. If you want to make sure that it's completely constrained, we can go back to our plane constraint and create that second toggle and make sure that we set the soft to false so that we have a hard constraint and so the geometry will not be allowed to exit this. And now what's interesting is that you can just go in Rhino and start moving some of these points, which will automatically change the shape of the geometry. And then every time you reset, your aggregation will be recreated and will be constrained within the new shape. So if you want to see it a bit better, we might want to create a wireframe component to see the boundaries and then maybe hide everything else. So then now we see we have this control volume which you can very quickly edit by moving the points. And then we can go back, reset our aggregation, and make sure that this aggregation is constrained with this. So this was what I wanted to show you today. So I hope that this was clear and now you can see the potential of using plane aggregations as a as plane constraints as a very fast way to control the final shape of an aggregation without the need of creating a field or when you're using field aggregations you could use planes to control specific areas in which your parts cannot be uh, placed so that's it i hope you enjoyed the video if you're enjoying the video series and you haven't done it yet i would ask you to subscribe to the channel so that you can stay updated with new videos coming and thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial.